Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Well, it's that time of year again. You got to spring forward and along with changing your clocks, the Kansas City Fire Department reminds you it's a good time to check your home's smoke detectors. Having working smoke detectors on every floor of your house and in every bedroom is one of the best ways to keep your family safe. The fire department has received a nearly $150,000 grant from the Heart of America Fire Chiefs to provide 5,000 smoke detectors for free to KCMO residents. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples with Kansas City Fire Department. I'm the Fire Marshal and I'm here to talk to you today about fire safety and that it is the weekend for change your clock, change your battery. We have in Kansas City Fire Department 5,000 smoke alarms to be distributed in the neighborhoods to folks that need a smoke alarm. These are the 10-year lithium-ion smoke alarms, good for 10 years. You don't need to replace the battery. They're easy to install. Just put it on your ceiling with two small screws. If you need help, we'll even come out and help you install the smoke alarm. You can contact us for that free smoke alarm by calling 816-784-9100. If you stop by a local fire station, they can also provide a smoke alarm right then and there. I'm Floyd Peoples. Have a safe weekend. As a reminder, Kansas City, Missouri City Ordinance requires landlords to provide working smoke detectors in all rental properties. The city held its annual tornado drill as part of the National Severe Weather Awareness Week. The city coordinates tornado and fire drill exercises annually. City Hall, Municipal Court, and other city-owned buildings are briefly closed to the public to ensure that these exercises have full participation from all city staff. The city holds these drills so that we can make sure we all know where to go to be safe and also know how to best help visitors in case of an actual emergency. The city's Office of Emergency Management also provides training sessions to teach residents how to handle emergency situations. You can stop in at the Clay County Hazard Mitigation Meeting on Tuesday, March 24th at 6 p.m. at the Pleasant Valley Baptist Church, 1600 North 291 Highway in Liberty. To learn more about severe weather risks and emergency preparedness, please visit the KCMO Office of Emergency Management webpage at kcmo.gov oem. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi there, Heather Lowenstein, Artistic Director of Stone Lion Puppet Theater here. On stage at the Westport Roanoke Community Center, we're fixing to start the Magic Cauldron, our tribute to all things Irish, to kick off March here at Sunday in the Park with Stone Lion. So we've got mermaids and selkies, we've got marionettes and hand puppets, we've got giant puppets that actually float into the audience, all here with leprechauns dancing around. This is actually what we call a cabaret puppet show, which means that there's not a real formal story line. It's all just really cool puppets all around a theme and this time it's St. Patrick's Day. We are a parks partner for several years now with Kansas City, Missouri Board of Commissioners of Parks and Recreation. Ah, that's a mouthful, isn't it? But what that is, is a whole lot of fun. The community centers are full of activities for all of our citizens, and we are proud to be partners with them, providing puppet shows, community art projects, festivals, and all kinds of great events. Coming up is the Puppets for the Planet Festival Series, kicking off April 4th at Greg Kleiss Community Center. We've got Easter egg hunts, including underwater Easter egg hunts. That's going to be a fun one. And all kinds of arts activities. And of course, it culminates with Mother's Day for Mother Earth on the lawn of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Last year, over 100 volunteers from this area got together to put on a giant puppet show. We're talking really huge ones for over 6,000 people. It's all free, and it's all for you. For more information about Stone Lion Puppet Theater and all the stuff we do with parks, hit www.stonelionpuppets.org. That's like the rock and the cat, puppets.org. Hi, I'm Colleen Doctorin with KCCG Channel 2 News. 
Today, Lakeside Nature Center, in partnership with Animal Health and Public Safety, released a rehabilitated hawk back into the wild. Hey, I'm super excited to, uh, to be out here today and be a part of this. You know, this is the hawk that uh, I got called out and got to, uh, to take out of the guy's bedroom after it crashed through the window. Um, Lakeside Nature Center did a great job rehabbing the bird, and uh, to be here today to, uh, to turn it loose is, is really exceptional for me. I think this goes to show that Kansas City Animal Health and Public Safety, when partnered with Lakeside Nature Center, um, shows that the city is really dedicated to animal welfare, and uh, as a whole, the city is very dedicated and uh, compassionate to animals. A little back history, February 6th, we got in a female red-tailed hawk from Kansas City um, Animal Control, and uh, or actually Animal Welfare and Public Safety. Uh, Chris here brought, us, uh, uh, brought her in, and she had flown through a gentleman's window and had become injured in flying through the window. Uh, she had lacerations on her legs, and she broke quite a few of her fe feathers. She broke tail feathers and primary feathers, which uh, would mean she would not be able to fly and hunt for food. So in the process of rehabilitating her, we took care of the uh, lacerations on her legs, which were no problem. She healed up really great, but we were in the dilemma of how can she fly? Um, she could fly a little bit, but she's never gonna be able to hunt for food, which means she won't survive on her own. We could wait a few months at least until the feathers fl grew out and then grew back in. Now we're talking probably six, seven months or so, or we could do what's called imping. And I have to give credit to my staff. They did a fantastic job. Imping is when you take uh, feathers um, from another red tail and you actually attach them kind of like a prosthetic feather to this red tail. Ten of her tail feathers are now red and because uh, she's a young bird so they're actually brown. So now she has ten red feathers of an adult and a few of her brown ones and her primary feathers, some of those were also imped. And what will happen is when she naturally molts those feathers will fall out, the, the prosthetic feathers, and her new feathers will grow in and she will be just fine with all brand new feathers. But instead of waiting six, seven months, we can wait two weeks. So that's a really great time and a bird that is, can be very high stress, you wanna get them out of rehab, back into the wild, back into their, their native area so they can survive and do what red tails do. The animals that come to us are severely damaged, they're sick, not all of them survive. So when we can have a win, this is really great, but you're also stressing the animal out. <laughs> uh, we come, every time we handle them, we do stress them out. This is a wild animal and they're terrified of us. Um, to a red tail, I'm a predator, you know what I mean? I'm gonna eat her, even though she, obviously I'm not, but she, has no, she doesn't know that I'm not. Um, so just simply handling her, when you saw I, I did have to pick her up because she was actually upside down and so I did pick her up. Uh, we hope to simply open it up and have them fly away. Um, actually, it did pretty good. She flew away on her own, which was fantastic. Thanks to this partnership between Lakeside Nature Center and Animal Health and Public Safety, this bird can now return to the wild where she can survive and possibly have babies in the future.
Harvard University has recognized the city's use of the Citizen Satisfaction Survey. Harvard's Ash Center saluted the survey use as a bright idea in government. The survey data is used during the monthly Casey Stat presentations when departments share their progress with the mayor and answer questions from the public. Survey results are always available on the city's open data catalog. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. To view this program again or other features that we show here on Channel 2, just go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmocco. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.